girls who are they have a several different paper routes in the late 80s and they um pretty much um time travel uh to the to this weird um future and uh get into a bunch of shenanigans so check it out paper girls on prime yeah i haven't haven't watched it it's good hopefully it's good i love the comics shout out brian k vaughn I do have one more wreck. I, uh, it did slip my mind. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but it's uh, The Gray Man. Shout out to CJ. Um, <laughs> uh, check it out if you haven't. Um, I know he hasn't, but he doesn't like it anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, I, mine too. <laughs> I find it very... I, I, find, I found it very entertaining. Like I said, I haven't finished it, so I don't know how it ends. But um, I'm about, I think I have probably 30 minutes left. But I think uh, it's very reminiscent of, like, 90s action. To me, at least, uh, the the line, the one-liners and stuff from uh, Chris Evans. Um, he's, like, classic, like, 90s, like, um, action villain. Um, and uh, some of the footage that they did with, like, drones and stuff was amazing. Um, I love what they're doing with that kind of stuff in movies now. Um very cool, action packed. Check it out if you haven't. It's on Netflix. It's a it's a Netflix original by the Russo brothers. Um, yeah, check it out. And, Green Man. And totally, rock. totally forgot that I had seen that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then earlier uh, today, I caught the first showing of uh, Bullet Train, and it is fucking rad. Oh man, I can't oh, wait! Wow, look at you <laughs> beating us to it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's great in this, even uh, even uh, Bad Bunny. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. Uh, so many treats, so many cameos. It's so it. You know, if I could compare it to something, I would say it's like a uh, modern uh, Smoke and Aces. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, okay. And yeah, it's gonna. If you like, you know, like adult action but with uh several beats of comedic relief you're gonna you both are gonna love this one it's it delivers on all cylinders in my opinion so go watch it as soon as you can on a big screen and now for the movie focus of the week so uh this week we're talking about Ready to Rumble. It's PG-13. It's from the year 2000. Runs at 1 hour and 47 minutes. And it's got a 23% on Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bangers only, people. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Brian Robbins. Written by Stephen Brill. Starring Oliver Platt, Scott uh, Kahn, David Arquette, Rose McGowan, Joe... Pantaliano, uh, DDP, Goldberg, Sting, and so many more. Uh, the film follows two best friends, Gordy and Sean, who are huge supporters of professional wrestling. When they score tickets to see their favorite champ at a live event, things take a turn for the worst when the champ is stripped of his title in devastating fashion. So the two set out on an adventure to help the king get back on top. Ready to Rumble is definitely a product of its time, coming out during the WCW area era uh something the movie makes quite obvious with tons of cameos and a slapstick-esque story it's easy to see why the film ultimately failed at the box office but has definitely cemented itself as a fun time capsule cult film that no doubt takes the majority of our generation back to their childhood uh thank you oh yeah well said um so i know let's talk about why we're t- we're doing this movie even though i know james loves it uh <laughs> we had a specific request to do ready to rumble yes yeah yeah uh from my boy uh hector i know me and you worked with them a while back um yeah me and him uh i think we both found out i mean we had me and him had been friends since middle school, but we had found out later on, uh, way after, I think, when we were working at Target together, um, we uh, both loved this movie. 
um, randomly, I think one of us brought it up and then we talked about it and then he came over to the house one time and we just watched it and, and laughed our asses off. But uh, yeah, I think uh, for him, I, I'm speaking for him, that I think this probably holds a special place in his heart and mine as well. Um, just growing up and watching this film, uh, it definitely, like you said, brings you back to that time, that era of uh, wrestling, that WCW, um, all the cameos, and I, I had, I was watching it uh, last night, and Alyssa, <laughs> there's, I don't even remember what scene it was, um, but I think a couple times she was just like, "What are you watching?" You know, but it, it was, it's just so perfect for me. At least I love this movie. I don't know about you guys. Um, it uh, just brings me back to childhood and when when wrestling was everything um, at a certain point. Yeah, I think it's very... Uh, I, haven't, I hadn't seen it in years. I want to say I haven't... This is only like the second or third time I've seen it. Um, okay. But yeah, dude, it brings back... It's very nostalgic and it brings you, takes you back to that time when, like you said, when wrestling was, was, was king. Like, if you didn't like wrestling... Right. You were like not like yeah. I, all my friends went to go see it. I didn't go see this in theaters, but all my friends went to go see it. Um, yeah, it was. It definitely takes you back. And um, yeah, dude, I think it's it is what it is. You know, it's a comedy about wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> winning any awards. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all the like little cameos, all the wrestlers and the, the announcers that are in it. <clears throat> All the, all the merch, it, yeah, it just kind of just takes you back. What about you, Wes? Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I dig this movie for for what it is. I've seen it a, a, a few times. Um, I know we've talked about it before, and you've uh, recommended it on the show maybe a few times now. Um, Probably, yeah. <laughs> Because I think you found it at your your old work for like super cheap or something. If yeah, it's like a dollar or something. Yeah, my, if my mind serves me correctly, but um, it's uh, it's pretty interesting this this film because I feel like it was it was made specifically to to get um, basic like to uh, spark interest in wcw because around this time uh their following was kind of uh disintegrating uh, as opposed to right. to wwe or wwf back then um and so you know they came up with doing this film that and that's why they only really reference wcw through this whole thing it was a kind of a marketing uh ploy to get fans um excited and i and i feel like it didn't really work out the way that they wanted it to uh because i think this took like 20 the budget was 20 million which is fucking crazy it seems like a lot of money for something like this but then they made like 12 at the box office um so definitely oh, wow. definitely yeah definitely a, a a cold hit um not enough people went to see it i guess which is interesting because I, I i would think that if maybe they made it more raunchy and it was rated r that it would flop but the fact that this was pg-13 and and it 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 didn't go um that it, it bombed so hard was super interesting especially with the amount of uh faces and i guess uh heels that they have in this um it's kind of interesting how they they picked Oliver uh, was Oliver Platt to be the king because it's like yo like this guy <laughs> does not look like a wrestler <laughs> at all yeah. and he's like super out of place and I'm not sure if that was just supposed to be like the fun, like a funny thing but it's kind of like yo what <laughs> like you can... <laughs> um but you know like like we say it is what it is. Um, I, I like the I really love the chemistry between the two um, best friends uh, it was Sean and Gordy um, yeah I know uh, Scott Khan is uh, the of course the son 
of, of James Caan, who just passed recently, so R.I.P. Um, he, I feel like they he looks just like his dad, so it's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's insane. But, um, but yeah, I love their chemistry t- together. I feel like they're what keeps the um, the movie going, essentially. Like their um, banter and stuff with each other, and especially when the, the movie opens, you have this kind of funny, um, how do you say, like uh, hyper stylized dream sequence where they start. Wrestling. Oh yeah, with Gordy and the <laughs> and the like the seven like the liquor store clerk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was insane. And Ra- Randy Savage <laughs> shows up. <laughs> <laughs> And I love how they like they took all this money to. If you notice, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but they sus- they put some kind of suspension in that um, <laughs> where when they do the suplexes and stuff, the the floor of the liquor store is is bouncy like the canvas. Did you guys notice <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah, I saw that. See, like the shelves like bouncy yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. It was like such a little detail. It's like how much did you guys spend on just doing that little sequence here? Um, but yes, definitely one of my favorite parts there. Uh, and then the fact that they're these kind of, what would you even say it? Like they're, um, waste management engineers. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're the guys who come and clean out your, uh, septic tanks. Um, but man, yeah, yeah. They're just that... eating cheeseburgers and the, uh, the shit is like coming out of the tank. <laughs> yes, yes, that scene <laughs> stuck with me. And then rewatching it, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> and they're like, oh, are you hungry? Like, yeah, let's go get something to eat. And they're all like wiping their like they're wiping the sweat off like their faces with their dirty ass gloves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they are definitely um, the, the heart of this film. Uh, they keep, like you said, they keep it together. They keep it going. Um, there are definitely those those guys, those kids uh, that never grew out of wrestling, and um, like you know, the, you know those super fans that are just like, oh, like man, you, you're the you're the greatest in the world, and and like they're just so stuck into that world. And even you know the the part where the, they actually catch up with Jimmy King, and he's like, you know, it's a a show right you know it's a it's a um, it's all a dance and he's like yeah yeah you're dancing yeah that's right and like they're not getting they're not understanding what he's trying to say he's like it's fake you know it's, it's not real you idiot <laughs> but uh, i love that scene and then they get so excited when uh <laughs> they're like oh yeah he's like he's like uh uh what what's the what's his move that uh the king has uh, like the crown you gotta, yeah, crown me. He's like, oh, crown me, crown me, come on. They're so excited to get their asses kicked by wrestlers. It's it's funny. Sal Bandini. Wanna wrestle? <laughs> that guy kills me every time I watch this movie. What a random role for Martin Lando to accept. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's it? That, uh, that one, he, and there's that one kid who's uh, like, supposed to be like a hacker. But uh, he's from, he, I know he's from the American Prime movies and the, a bunch of movies from the 90s. Sherman. Um, what the fuck are yeah, you Yeah, the Shermanator. <laughs> <laughs> the Shermanator. And what's super interesting about this is the fact that WCW wanted to promote um, the film within, like, by doing storylines, which um, they basically brought David Arquette in. Um into WCW where he was actually wrestling for a while. I don't know if Ryan remembers this or not. And um Yeah, that, that was fucking wild. They 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 <laughs> they made this f- fatal um decision to uh to 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 make him like heavyweight champion of the world and uh fans lost their shit. Uh, to say the least and he, everybody started hating him you know and and keep in mind this is 2000 so this is after he's already been um uh you know dewey and has the fame of, of scream behind him but this kind of derailed uh arquette and that's it's a really sad thing i feel like this kind of fucked up 
the his his um the streak that